Good afternoon and welcome to today's webinar. Um, hopefully you can all hear us. Um, if you can't, just drop a message into the chat box just to let us know that you're having any issues and we'll try and sort that out. Um, but it is just two o'clock, so uh, hopefully lots of people will be joining, um, either have joined or joining imminently. Um, for those of you who don't know who I am, I'm Marie and I'm the Partnerships Manager here at My HR Toolkit and I'd like to welcome you to today's webinar. Um, so for those of you who've obviously joined us in the past, you'll probably realise that we've been doing a series of different webinars on different HR topics, business topics, um, since the start of lockdown one, which seems like quite a long time ago, which has all been very popular. Um, seems quite timely that um, we're coming up to the the like the first anniversary of obviously when most people are starting to work from home so uh, very timely that we're looking at ways of we of keeping remote employees engaged um so we just thought that with lots of people potentially starting to struggle working in lockdown three it might be uh, worth investigating some strategies to how to keep your employees engaged and motivated in the longer term. Um, so today I'm joined by our guest speaker, uh, Helena White from the HR department, who will be covering uh, various different topics, um, identifying low morale in your team and what you can do about it, some tips and tricks around um, how to motivate your team motivate your team remotely and how most importantly to look after yourself and also your employees. So I will introduce her in a second, uh, just a couple of housekeeping things. Um, so the way in which the webinar will, will run is, is that we will have Helena talk about some of those areas in a presentation which will probably last about 25-30 minutes and then we've kept quite a bit of time at the end to answer uh, some of your questions. Um, so you'll notice on your little hover little uh, task bar at the bottom there is a Q&A box on that menu where there's a Q&A uh, sort of where you can enter your questions so please feel free to add any questions as we go and as I said we'll probably come to them at the end uh, where Helena's got some time to, to, to go through them. Um, well, there's also a Zoom chat box which you might have seen a few of us have put in some messages in there. Uh, please do get involved in the chat. Um, if you could Put your questions in the Q and A box, just more from the perspective, so that we just don't miss them. Um, but if you've got any other problems, just stick them into the chat. Uh, other bits of housekeeping: um, just clarify that today's session is obviously offering general advice, not any legal advice. Um, and when we come to the questions, we'll just have a quick look as to like what what they are. If they're very specific, we might um, I might leave it to Helena to decide how how best to to do that. But in some cases, we might just take those offline because, as I said, if they're very specific specific cases, um, just just a point to note on our next webinar. Um, what I will do once the webinar has started is I'll put a link in the chat box on our next webinar and a link to the registration page of how you can register for that. It is on how to make sure that dismissals are fair. So again, if that's of interest, please do sign up. Otherwise, I will move on to the intros. Uh, so as I've mentioned, we've got Helena White uh, to talk to us about keeping remote employees engaged. Um, I'll let her introduce herself much more in detail, but just as an overview, uh, Hel Helena is an HR professional with over 25 years of experience across a wide range of industries. Uh, lots of experience in providing HR services to both large and smaller businesses and has a really clear understanding of the priorities for SMEs. So hopefully a lot of you will find that really helpful. So Helena, welcome, and I'll pass over to you and I will also let you start to share your screen. Thank you very much, Marie. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you to Marie and to the HR Toolkit team for giving me the opportunity to present to you all today. As Marie said, my company is the HR department and we provide outsourced human resources support to small and medium organisations. We've got about 60 offices around the UK. And what we're going to be doing today is talking through some strategies to engage and motivate employees. Why do we want to do that? What can we do? What should you be looking out for as the owner or the manager of a business with employees? What can you do if it's not working? And also looking out for yourself and your employees. We'll have plenty of time, as Marie said, for Q&A. So make sure you know where the Q&A button is at the bottom of the screen and pop some questions in there. And we'll definitely have plenty of time to cover those later. So the January blues, well, it's pretty difficult to keep motivated in January normally with reduced daylight hours, colder temperatures, people being financially quite stressed, uh, stretched post Christmas. 
However, this year it really feels 10 times worse. For the many parents with responsibility for trying to homeschool children as well as work, the thought of the schools not being open until after Easter is almost too much to bear. Um, and I can say that as the mother of three children. For others who are hoping for a holiday this summer, the chances of going abroad seem increasingly distant. So it's no surprise that even the most optimistic members of your team might be really subdued at the moment. So where are you on this? I'm sure we can all recognise that there's people we know, or maybe even ourselves, in the, the yellow, the amber, or even the red here. So as we go through today, it's important for you to recognise as a business owner or a manager that this applies to you as well. You're not going to be in a position to help and motivate employees if you're not prepared to help yourself. So why should we be looking at engaging and motivating remote working staff? Well, first of all, employers have got a duty of care to protect employees' mental health. And secondly, happy and healthy employees increase the chance of, of an attractive and prosperous place of work, gives your company culture a boost. The difficulty is that not everybody's comfortable being vocal about their struggles. And there's a bit of a stigma attached to being open and showing weakness at work, which could result in you having to guess how and when and to help those in need. This can leave you and your employees open to risk. Uh, there's also a financial cost, like pre-coronavirus, sick days were said to be costing employers more than £100 a day in lost productivity alone. But with the coronavirus and everything else, this figure is only going to increase. So to keep your business working well, it's a really good idea to familiarise yourself with the signs and symptoms of poor well-being um, and we're also going to go through some solutions. I'm going to touch now on how to spot the signs of an employee in distress. Uh, we're going to come on later in the presentation to talk in a bit more depth about employee well-being and mental health but just as an introduction the following should, should raise a flag for you to check in with an employee to see if they need support. So any of those five points there, if you're seeing any of that, we'd, we'd really rec recommend that you check in with the employee one-to-one -one and have a conversation with them. Now, an inexperienced manager might see these as a reason for a disciplinary, but given the current climate and everything people are having to deal with, we'd advise just to chat initially to try and get to the root of the problem first. So what should you be doing as the owner of a business or a manager? Well, keeping in touch is the key thing. Keeping regular contact with employees and maintain one-to-ones. If you're not already doing regular one-to-one -one meetings with your employees, I'd start them now. It's vital to monitor employees' well-being, to offer support. I'd talk to your employees and ask them how they're coping. So move the focus away from what they're doing to how they're doing, ask them how they're doing. You might be able to come up some ways there and then. For example, one of our clients recently um, uh, spoke to an employee who they perceived was, was struggling, wasn't particularly engaged. And it turned out they had one device between a family. Um, they were trying to share it. So there was an immediate solution to that. The company had some spare devices. They loaned them to the family um, and th that, that helped uh, initially. So there might be some quick fixes. So we talked about effectively communicating. Um, you might want to consider daily check-ins, certainly for some employees. If you've got new employees, people who are learning, new in a role, perhaps people who you perceive might be struggling um, or people you've got concerns about, you, you might want a daily check-in. Now, you're going to have to be careful that it doesn't spill over into micromanagement, but do consider that. Use a range of communication methods. So you might have a team meeting with a number of people on the call, but I'd also recommend you have private check-ins as a way to talk more confidentially with individuals. There's a bit of Zoom doom 
Zoom fatigue setting in. So I'd avoid overuse of one particular method of communication just to encourage a bit of variety. So pick up the phone, use some chat, um, you know, try and try and find a different way of communicating with people. If you've been relying on one exclusively, just try and mix it up a bit. You might already be doing this, but it's helpful to get people together to talk about things other than work. So you might want to arrange some time where you all get together virtually and just have a chat over a sandwich at your desk. We've all been part of Zoom quizzes and I know they're not for everybody, but you might want to try and find some ways that your teams can socialise virtually. There's a lot you miss out on by not being together in the office and it's important to try and find some opportunities for people to connect with the team. As the owner or manager in a business, you're going to be leading from the front. So it's important you're really honest and open with your employees. I've mentioned already, try to resist micromanaging employees working from home. Keep track of your team's morale and try and help your employees to have a clear work-life balance. If you've got managers and supervisors, Consider whether they've got the skills they need to effectively manage and motivate a remote team. We have found that some um, online learning courses are particularly in demand right now, such as conflict resolution training. A lot of people are getting really quite short with each other and um, not being together face to face can escalate some issues. So conflict resolution training is quite popular at the moment and also mental health awareness training for managers and supervisors. So just have a think and make sure that your managers and supervisors have got the skills and the training they need to be able to manage remote workers. It's important for you to try and set some clear expectations and also communicate vision. We're all quite into the day to day at the moment, but it's important to point out where we're going, what's happening in the future. Where possible, we'll try and give employees autonomy over their work. And if you can, offer to stretch them or give them different opportunities to upskill. It's quite easy at the moment to focus on the day to day and forget to look to the future, but do really do try to communicate your vision of where the business is going. And even if the timescales aren't that clear because of coronavirus, it's important to communicate that. You might find that some employees are coping really well with remote working, so now might be the time to discuss giving them different opportunities, taking on more responsibility or improving their existing skills. One of our clients, for example, has used the opportunity of remote working to get employees to cross-train on each other's jobs. and. That means that everybody's building their skills, they're more engaged, they're more motivated, they can see that they're learning new things. Other employees have set up some e-learning, some online learning for employees to try and upskill. You're probably feeling this yourself, um, a bit of burnout. So not being physically in the presence of colleagues means a lot of people you know, feel unable to take a break and step away from their workstations. People feel compelled to respond to emails and work well beyond their normal working hours. So your role as a manager or a business owner, encourage staff to take breaks just as they would if they were in the office because the working time regulations still apply. So that's, you know, at least a 20 minute break if somebody's working more than six hours, for example. You, you could make sure employees sign off at the end of the day. You might want to suggest some sort of end of work day ritual. Uh, I, I don't necessarily mean, you know, everybody's sitting there with a gin and tonic, but you could come up with something that says, right, this is the end of the work day. We're all logging off. You might have heard that sitting is the new smoking and it's predicted that sickness absence for back pain is forecast to rise, rise hugely during lockdown. So in order to motivate employees and hopefully avoid some sickness absence, you might want to encourage employees to spend less time sitting down. 
some of our clients have introduced a step counter challenge, you know, a Fitbit challenge to reward the employees who get over a certain number of steps per day. But really, whatever you can do to encourage employees to exercise regularly and take breaks is going to be a good thing. It's also going to be helpful to help your employees to stick to their working hours and perhaps review the need for meetings. You know how tiring it is to be on Zoom calls all day. So could your employees effectively spend the meeting time working on a project rather than talking about it? Does your meeting have to be a full hour or could you try for a half an hour meeting, for example? And also think about giving employees the opportunity to stand up and move around while they're on the phone. You might want to provide headsets or Bluetooth headsets. I've started uh, trying to stand up for every phone call I have because I was spending too much time sitting down. There's also some great apps around. So I've put the uh, details here for the stand up app. That's an Apple app, but there's plenty of others around that give you little reminders every so often during the working day to stand up and move around. It's important to point out that home isn't a safe space for everyone. And as a business owner or a manager, you need to be aware that there might be some employees who feel unsafe working from home. We know that domestic abuse helplines reported a surge in calls over the last few months and you might want to consider um, allowing some employees to attend the workplace if it's COVID secure and if it's possible. We recommend keeping a record of anyone doing so and trying to speak to those employees to find out the root of the problem. And you, you might need to assist further. We're, um, the HR department are contributing, well, we contributed to the consultation on workplace support for victims of domestic abuse and earlier this month um, the Minister for Small Business published a report that's got a lot of information in it about how employers can help their employees. Um, if you do a search for that, that's a really helpful document, just something to be aware of as an employer. Something that will help motivate and engage employees is, is focusing on the longer term, you know, what that there's not a lot to look forward to at the moment, but if you can help employees focus on the longer term and look at their training and their development to increase their skills, maybe help prepare them for a different role or, or just to get more competent in their existing role. Now, employees can carry out training, whether they're on furlough, working remotely or attending work. So if employees are on furlough or flexible furlough, it doesn't count as working if they carry out training provided that training doesn't provide any services to the business or, or create any revenue for the business. So we're finding that a lot of employers are using the time to get their employees up to speed and up to date with health and safety training, for example, as well as other things like cybersecurity training, GDPR training, mental, mental health awareness training, or equality and diversity training, for example. So you may not feel like you have the time to allow your employees to do some training, but a lot of online courses are about 30 or 40 minutes long. They can be fitted in around the working day and your employees can do them on any device, a mobile phone or a laptop or a tablet. Um, and they're really very, very accessible. So do consider that to give people just something other than the day-to-day -to, -day to focus on. Now, I can feel you all rolling your eyes and I'm going to ask you to just bear with me. Performance reviews. It, it's not really something that you might want to think about at the moment. Why on earth would you want to do performance reviews when there's so much else going on? But I'm not suggesting that you do the usual type of performance review. The once a year administrative nightmare that nobody looks forward to. Managers see it as a waste of time and employees look forward to it as much as a visit to the dentist. However, there's a growing realisation that these types of performance reviews don't add any value. They take up a huge amount of time and they lead to a, a very fixed mindset about somebody's performance and their abilities. If you have used annual performance appraisals in the past in your business, you'll know that you can sometimes spend some 
time talking about what someone did six months or, or even a year ago, it's not very productive. So traditional performance management processes are being scrapped in many organisations as it's beginning to be recognised that they, they damage employee engagement and they take up a huge amount of time and resources. They can frequently be demoralising, confrontational or a waste of time. If you've been involved in them in the past, I'm sure you've got um, recollections of people who wanted to argue through throughout their performance review, burst into tears or just sat there and said nothing. I mean, that's that's the fight and flight response that often a performance review can trigger. The traditional way of doing performance reviews can be really bureaucratic and time consuming. So Deloitte actually calculated that their performance management process, completing the forms, holding the meetings, rating employees, consumed up to two million hours each year. So as a result, many organisations like Deloitte, Accenture, Microsoft, Gap and others have decided to scrap the annual evaluation cycle and replace it with some ongoing feedback and coaching. So bear with me because this is this is something that's not going to take a huge amount of time and could actually lead to increased engagement and motivation. So the new approach that, that a lot of larger organisations have already adopted, it's going to filter down to smaller organisations over time. But the new approach is to have frequent, more informal check-ins with the employee with a focus on the future and, and trying to develop more of a growth mindset. So focus on the employee in their role. Um, there's no comparing performance between uh, other employees provide feedback much more often. So, uh, for example, at the end of each major project or every month or, or every quarter. And this approach takes much less time to complete. For example, Deloitte are just using four questions, two of which require yes or no answers. Um, And it moves from focusing on the past to focusing on the future, as I've said. So rather than reviewing a whole year's performance in one go, these shorter, more frequent reviews are designed to help employees move forward with their careers rather than look back on what's happened in the past. It takes quite a lot of subjectivity out of the process and it really does fuel the employee's performance. And it means because there's more frequent check-ins, the manager's got much more opportunity to steer an employee towards his or her best performance. So with a focus on the future and more of a growth mindset, people are going to be more motivated to, to learn and improve. They're able to adapt and change their skills and behaviours much faster. And they're willing to share knowledge and help other people succeed as well. So as an example, one of our clients introduced this approach a few months ago. Managers already had regular one-to-ones with their team members. And all they do is allocate 15 minutes every month in one of those meetings to focus on the employee's future development rather than the day-to-day -day tasks. The conversation, for example, might include a discussion about how to broaden the employee's skills by having them start to learn one of their colleagues' tasks. It might include arranging some online learning through a short e-learning course, and it might involve a bit of basic coaching by the manager to, an, to improve an aspect of their work. The employee then records those actions in a very short email. In this example, it it would be just three bullet points and emails that to the manager. That's the record of the conversation. No big, long form filling. There's then a record of the conversation, which they can use to follow up on and review in the following month's discussion. It takes about 15 minutes every month. And then by the end of the year, the manager's got 12 emails recording progress over the year. Obviously, for any employees where there are serious performance concerns, you're going to follow a more in-depth process. However, for the majority of employees, this light touch, forward focused approach is really motivating and it's very easily integrated into everyday work. So why change your performance review process or introduce introduce it now? Well, it really does help to motivate and engage employees. I can't think of anything worse than working from home and being asked to go through performance 
reviews over Zoom, um, you know, in the old way that, you know, once a year, a big long review, filling out lots of lots of paperwork. Whereas this approach, it's going to help to motivate and engage employees. It's a focus on the future, which we all need at the moment. Um, it's a growth mindset and it's really easy to introduce now. I suspect many of you will already be having frequent online one to ones with your employees and it won't take much to just allocate some of that time to focus on what the employee needs to do to develop in the future rather than just all the day-to-day -day tasks that you would normally talk about in that meeting. So that's performance reviews. Um, I'm not saying you should look at that but it's, it's something to think about and um, it's going to be a really easy time to introduce it now um, rather than when everybody's back at work in the office if that's going to happen. I'm going to talk now about the work environment and equipment because this can also be something that leads to employees being less motivated or engaged than they would normally be. You know, if somebody's working from their kitchen table um, on a very old, slow laptop with perhaps broadband that's not doing what they need it to do, on a kitchen chair that's not really very comfortable, um, you can understand why they might be less motivated, engaged than they would be in their nice new office environment. So as an employer, you should really provide similar furniture and equipment uh, for remote workers as you would in an office. So a suitable desk, perhaps an adjustable chair and uh, maybe IT equipment. So where appropriate, it might be it might be sensible to loan staff equipment from the office to use at home. And you should also have a think about whether staff need any additional equipment. If they're dealing with confidential information, do they need a shredder or a simple storage cabinet that's lockable, for example? Right, so we've talked about the things you can do as an employer to try and engage and motivate your staff. But if you're, if you're doing all of that and, and nothing's working, then there are some options you could consider. You might want to look at flexible working, for example, which would be a temporary change to an employee's working hours. Focus on the work that they've completed rather than the hours work so the employee can work around their home life. So for example, with so many people at the moment trying to uh, help homeschooling children and also work, that might be something that you could consider. I would advise discussing it with the employee because they need to agree a change in their contractual hours, even if it's temporary. So that's one option. Another option would be flexible furlough. HMRC updated the rules to the furlough scheme to confirm that employees can be furloughed if they're unable to work due to caring responsibilities, such as school closures. It is up to you as the business owner or the business whether to furlough employees, and it depends on the needs of your business. But I would just say if employees are left feeling unsupported, they might experience increased levels of stress, and that could have damaging long term effects on both their mental and their physical health. So it, it, it is something to consider. I'm going to spend a bit more time now talking about um, employees' mental mental health. If you're a, a small business owner or manager, you're, you're in quite a good position to spot if and when somebody's struggling with their mental health. There's five simple things you can do to coach employees um, if you think that they might need some help with their mental health. Helping them clearly define the working day from home life. And I'd say you should take a lead here. So if, if you're communicating with your employees regularly, it would be quite easy for you to say, you know, I'm logging off now for lunch or I'm taking an extended lunch break to get my exercise for the day. Or at the end of the day, you can make it clear that you're logging off now and you expect everybody else to do the same. So really take the lead. So communicate what you're doing and connect with people, not just by video call. Sometimes a, a phone call, it's easier for people to talk over the phone when they can't see you and relax. So exercise helps, even if it's just a quick walk or a change of scene. Have a think about how you can encourage your employees to do that. 
And as I said, make sure that everybody is logging off and getting some rest. You might need to consider referring an employee to occupational health or referring them for some counselling if you're concerned about their mental health well-being and these simple steps aren't working. You might find employees uh, are feeling fearful, feeling stress, feeling anxiety or depression. Now, as a manager or, or an owner of a business, you're not expected to become an expert in mental health. However, there are some very simple online courses that you could do. They take maybe 30 or 40 minutes that would give you a much better understanding of what to look for and how you can help your employees by pointing them in the right direction to get some help. You might have an employee assistance program in your business. If you do, you'll know it's a really cost effective way of giving confidential support for employees. It gives employees direct access to online or over the phone counselling, a whole load of resources and support on a variety of issues. That could be mental health, financial concerns, family or relationship issues, substance abuse, caring for elderly parents. I mean, the list goes on. And if you have one in place, now would be a good time to gently remind all employees that it's there, including those on furlough. If, if you don't have an employee assistance program, then there are a, a huge number of mental health resources online. Some of them are free of charge. Uh, there's also other packages that you can sign up to, apps that your employees can use to help build resilience, find resources and get some help if they need it. A lot of organisations are putting together a wellness policy if they don't have one already and asking employees to complete well-being action plans. So if that's something that you think would be helpful for your organisation, you know, do look further into it. Um, I've put some, uh, the name there, My Mind Pal. That's actually um, an app that employees can access through their phone or through their computer and it gives employees a lot of strategies to help their mental well-being including access to a range of resources little two-minute quizzes that help help them see where they are today and also point them in the direction of some help and some counselling if they need it. So just to try and summarise um, where we are, we've talked about a lot of the issues that, that maybe prevent employees feeling motivated or engaged. We, you know, you need as an employer to try and generate a bit more of that teamwork that you'd normally get in the office. Um, you've got to try and be visible and communicate to employees and to a certain extent trust them to get on with the job and not micromanage them. Um, you've got to be aware when people are feeling not motivated and you can only do that if you're talking regularly to your employees. We've talked about lack of office equipment and what that might do to somebody's motivation and the lack of a good working environment. We've talked about burnout. Um, we've, we've explained how that's going to risk your company's productivity. We've talked about family issues getting in the way and what you might be able to do about that. And we spent some time talking about mental health. You do have a duty of care as an employer, and it's important to remember that um, you need to take steps. It's not just something you can ignore. So um, I've talked for far too long now, so I think it's time to look at the questions. Um, Happy to take any questions now. I can see that there are a few in the Q&A box. Um, yeah. um, just you, to point out that the HR department do have a number of resources available for uh, businesses. At the moment, we've got um, a three month HR support package that we're launching. Uh, there'll be some of the workplace wellbeing resources that I mentioned earlier, a wellbeing action plan template and a home working policy. We've also got a number of e-learning courses that um, businesses can can use on a whole range of topics including mental health and well-being so thank you all very much for listening um let's have a look at the questions well thank you very much Lena. um 
just a reminder for people, if you've got any questions, if you could pop them into the questions and answers box, just because I'm just conscious that they might get lost a little bit in the chat. But we've got a couple come in. Uh, obviously, anyone else, just feel free to pop them along. First question is from Emma Jane. Um, she's kind of mentioned that her staff are furloughed. Um, she's obviously aware that they shouldn't be working, but she's asked each of them to write a little bit of a bio about how they got into hairdressing, what's in inspired them. Uh, she calls them every week to make sure they're all uh, Okay, so she calls them every so often to make sure that they're all in um, and they've given them two, two weeks, but she's only only one of them has given me their bio. I guess it's probably in relation to how can you, if you're trying quite hard, as I imagine, as a employer to get engaged with your employees, but they're not necessarily responding, how, how best should they go about that? Yes. Um, Emma, thanks for the question. Um, Technically speaking, as you're asking them to write a bio so that you can post that on social media, that potentially could be seen as then generating some income for your business. So if we're doing a real black and white view of the, the furlough rules, I'd say probably asking them to do that while they're on furlough wouldn't really come under the, the spirit of the furlough scheme. Um, it's perfectly possible if they're furloughed um, for you to unfurlough them for an hour um, and call it, you know, it could be flexible furlough, then get them to do a little bit of work for you. You'd have to pay them the full salary for whatever time they're not on furlough and then pop them back on furlough um, when they've done whatever it is that you need them to do. So that's an option for you. Um, if you're struggling to find ways um, to engage with them, I would say it's perfectly okay to ask them to participate in some training. And that could just be a Zoom call with you to go through some, um, you know, some training online, or you could send them something to do in their own time. So that is absolutely okay for you to require them to do training while they're furloughed. And, um, you know, as long as you give them enough notice and make sure that they've got access to um you know a computer where they can access zoom if you're doing it on zoom that would be fine cool okay great thank you uh, a couple of questions around i think the stuff that you're doing around performance reviews performance management uh, bruce has asked what are the four questions that you use for their performance reviews i should know this really shouldn't i <laughs> yeah so it's it's interesting um uh one of them is um given what I know of this person's performance, and if it was my money, I'd award them the highest possible paying increase and in bonus on a rate on a scale of one to five. So if it was if it was my money, where would I put my money? Given what I know of this person's performance, I would always want them on my team. And again, that's a scale of one to five. So that gives you quite an accurate view of somebody. And then the third question is, this person is at risk for low performance. And that's going to identify some problems that might harm the the client or the team and that's just a yes or no question and finally the fourth question is this person is ready for promotion today yes or no so what Deloitte managers are doing is they're having frequent check-ins with their employees at the end of a project or you know maybe every month or every three months and then once a year at least they're having just those four questions um, to sum up where everybody is so it's really quite a low maintenance approach and instead of waiting to the end of a year or every six months you're getting much more real-time um, information about how a person's doing and you're able to help them as a manager rather than waiting to, a whole year to say well a year ago you weren't performing on something and you know what are we going to do about it now so it helps that way cool um so helen asks do you have an example of a simple uh, performance review or one-to-one -one form that can be shared um, um what i'd say is almost rather than having a form i'd, I'd almost what, what seems to work quite well is for when the manager and the employee have, have a check-in or an informal conversation, just get the employee, okay, so 
put it to the employee to sum up the actions. And it could just be three bullet points on an email and send it through to the manager. And that's your record of the conversation. You're focusing on what the employee is going to do differently in the future. And that could be some training. It could be um, doing something differently as a result of, you know, the manager perhaps coaching them in a different way of doing something. And then you've got that email there to refer back to in the next meeting that you have, whether it's in a month's time or whenever. I, I wouldn't even bother with a form. I'd, as long as it's recorded, you know, and an email is perfectly acceptable, I do it that way. Um, and then if you want to have a, a, you know, like Deloitte do, if you want to have a once a year sort of summary, you can come up with some questions, yes or no answers or a scale of one to five, but really make it very light touch. Um, and for the majority of your employees, that's going to be absolutely fine. As I mentioned, if there are employees who um, have you've got performance concerns about, you might want to do things a little bit differently um, with them once you've identified that there are concerns. Okay, cool. And I know, Helen, you asked about the appraisal module in Toolkit. Um, I've just replied in the chat box because um, we do have a training webinar that was recorded a little while ago that has appraisals as part of that. So obviously there's a lot of appraisal tools that might be able to support what Helen yes. is talking about. So I've just put that into the chat box so that you can have a look. Uh, next question is from Andrea and she asks, the HR support package, when is this likely to be available and will this be included within the current HR package? Yes, sure. I think we're launching it next week. So um, the beginning of February. Um, it's not part of the current um, advice line package. Uh, so there's elements of it that will be that will be extra. But I'd say talk to your um, HR department contact next week and they'll have the details of the package then. Great, thank you. Um, next question, Cassie asks, please can you do a recap on what the new approach to appraisals was? I know you kind of mentioned it a couple of times, perhaps a bit of a quick summary. So in summary, you know, ditch the old once a year, very bureaucratic, form heavy, backward looking approach and move to um, more of a growth mindset forward focused approach with much more frequent check-ins with the employee but really light touch on on the admin and the bureaucracy so maybe include them within um, you know the manager's one-to-ones with an employee you don't need to set up a separate meeting just allocate one of those one-to-ones carve out a bit of time in it maybe once a month and say right we're going to have 15 minutes of this meeting to talk about not the day-to-day -day stuff but what we need to do to develop you for the future and devote the time to talk about that the employee then summarizes the action points on an email to the manager um, and then you review it, you know, the progress in the next meeting, whenever that is, a month later or, or whenever. Okay, great, thank you. And uh, Bruce, I'll have another question. So um, we're all obviously aware of the fact that remote working has gone on for a very, very long time. Um, how would you advise employers to manage positively the return to the workplace or the office in the future, especially in situations where, you know, for instance, you might have staff who want to stay working from home or a blend of home and office office working yeah it it is it's going to be very difficult for a lot of employees and employers so I would recommend first of all communicating so start flagging in advance as far in advance as possible that you will be looking to getting people back to the workplace when it is safe to do so you're also going to need to make sure that you communicate really clearly what what your risk assessment is and make sure that you keep it updated. Now there is a requirement for um, companies to publish their risk assessment on their website if they've got uh, 50 or more employees but I would say even if you're smaller than that you should be sharing a risk assessment with employees and discussing it with them to see what concerns they've got, what suggestions they've got so that they're very clear that the workplace is going to be a safe environment for them to return to and they've had a chance to raise any queries. What a lot of um, companies are finding is helpful to do is a questionnaire to staff. Um, 
it doesn't have to be particularly long, but a questionnaire out to all employees saying, how are you feeling about the return to work? How's it gone for you during furlough or uh, working remotely from home? Uh, what concerns have you got? Uh, what's perhaps what's going to prevent you from working, um, uh, returning to work um, you know, in the short term, and that might be childcare requirements, for example, at the moment. Um, and finally, what I would say is you will need to treat any requests from an employee for flexible working very carefully. Um, you know, nothing's changed with the law. There's still a process you'd need to follow for flexible working requests. So if somebody does say, I want to remain working from home, or I want to work three days in the office, two days at home, or I want to change my hours or whatever it is, um, you're going to need to treat that as a flexible working request and respond to it, you know, in, in the way that's set out, um, you know, in the legislation. So make sure that you follow your own policies and procedures. If you've got anything written down on that, or if not, um, you know, follow what's set out. Sorry, my computer hung there. Um, Okay, you're still there. Good. Sorry. The joys of working from home also has like issues with my internet. Um, Cassie just asks quickly, um, are you able to email the four questions that Deloitte uses for their appraisals? Um, I'm not sure if we're going to have people's email. We'll do a follow up. So yeah, we're happy to put that if, if yes. that if you're allowed to share that. Yeah. Okay, or to be honest, a really quick Google search for Deloitte performance appraisal um four questions will probably do it <laughs> okay cool um anyone so there yeah are... i can email it okay that's brilliant but we can we can include that on the follow-up um anyone else got any any questions that they uh wanted to ask or any scenarios um or want to share anything We've just got a tiny bit of time left if anyone else has anything I might leave it a bit open for, for now, but I wondered, uh, Helena, whether you had any like final final words of wisdom around it. It is difficult. It is difficult it, it right is, now. It is extremely difficult. Well, I'd say the communication is going to be the key thing. So either you as, as a business owner and manager or, or your managers, supervisors, make sure that they are talking to employees who are working remotely from home. And even those on furlough as well, actually, it's absolutely fine to have a catch up with people on furlough. And I would recommend it so that you can find out how people are doing. You know, how are you doing? Not what are you working on today, but actually really, how are you doing? And don't, don't take fine for an answer. <laughs> you know, you might need to probe a bit to say, look, really, how is, is it going? Is there anything you're struggling with? What can I do to help you? What's going to make it easier? You might not be able to help with all of that. You know, a lot of people are saying at the moment, I just want to be furloughed. That's not possible for a lot of businesses. So you might have to say, look, that's not going to be possible. But let's have a chat about, you know, why you don't feel you can do all the work at the moment and see if we can come up with a solution. And it might be as simple as perhaps reducing their working hours, making them a bit more flexible so they can do some more work in the evening if that's possible. Or it might be something around providing them with some more equipment. Um, or IT that might make things a little bit easier but just talk to people and that will help with a lot of the issues you come across and if if there are uh, any more complicated issues around mental health or people refusing to work or not capable of working and you feel like you've explored all the options we've talked about today and you're still not getting anywhere then i would i would say take some professional advice about what to do next okay brilliant thank you um i think that was probably it for the questions so um i hope you all join me in thanking helena for her time uh, this afternoon and going through that um as we've just mentioned we will send a recording out of the uh, after this webinar um as well as any follow-up so you can just expect that in the next couple of days uh just a reminder about our next webinar that's coming up on february the 10th at 10 a.m so we've shifted back to the morning um i did put a recording uh, sorry a, a, a link to sign up um, in the chat box but again we'll, we'll follow that up on our 
on our email. But um, other than that, if no one else has any questions, um, we will leave it then. Say thank you to Helena again. Cool. I hope everyone has a really good day. Thank you very much, everybody. That's all right. Thank you.